Good evening, members and guests, and welcome to this virtual meeting of the Council. This meeting is being held under regulations which came into effect on the 4th of April 2020 in response to COVID-19. My name is Councillor Patrick Cunningham, Mayor of Winchester and Chairman of Council. There are a few housekeeping issues to run through first. Please can I ask that everyone present in this virtual meeting must mute your microphone and that your camera is turned off whilst you are not addressing the Council, as this will reduce background noise and avoid any unintentional disturbances. This is especially important with your microphone as so many attendees online at one time. Your microphone should only be unmuted when you are formally addressing the meeting. Please can I also advise that this meeting is being audio recorded and live streamed from the website and then can be found next to the meeting's details where the recording will remain thereafter. The meeting will also be recorded with the video uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel after the meeting. Members and officers, where appropriate, for each item it is important to please only use the chat function of the meeting to indicate that you wish to speak, and I will invite you then to speak at the appropriate time. Please do not use the hand function for this meeting. Each member will be invited to speak in turn, and therefore I would encourage all members to keep your contributions as clear and concise as possible. <coughs> if you wish to raise a point of order or explanation in accordance with the Constitution, please also use the chat function only. I will invite that member to speak immediately. I become aware of the request. Again, please do not use the hand function for this meeting. When speaking and referring to the agenda papers, please make sure that you reference the page or the paragraph number. Finally, if members wish to leave the meeting at any point and for any period of time, could they please make themselves known to me again through the chat function? I will announce to the meeting that you are leaving the meeting and your return if applicable. Thank you. Can I now ask Democratic Services to undertake a roll call of members of the Council to confirm who is present this evening? Good evening, members. I'll now uh, call your name, names out in alphabetical order. If you could just confirm your uh, present, please, by switching on your camera and your microphone. Councillor Ackwell. Yes, good evening, present. Councillor Becker. Yes, hello, I'm here. Councillor Bell. Present. Councillor Bentote. Present. Councillor Bronk. Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Brook. Good evening, I'm here, present. Councillor Clear. Good evening, yes, I'm here, present. Councillor Clementson. Good evening, yes, I'm present, thank you. Councillor Cook. Good evening to one and all. I am here, present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Krask. Good evening, present. Councillor Cunningham. Good evening, present. Councillor Cutler. Good evening, uh, present. Councillor Evans. Present. Councillor Fern. Good evening, present. Councillor Ferguson. <clears throat> Good evening, yes, I'm present. Councillor Gemmell. Yes, I'm here, thank you. Councillor Godfrey. Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Gordon Smith. Councillor Gordon Smith. I'll re return to Councillor Gordon Smith at the end. Councillor Green. Yes, good evening, present. Uh, apologies received from Councillor Griffiths. Councillor Hiscock. Yes, I'm here, good evening. Councillor Horrell. Yes, good evening. Thank you. Councillor Humby. Yes, good evening, present. Councillor Hutchison. Yes, good evening, I'm here, thank you. Councillor Laming. 
Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Lurney. Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Lumby. Good evening, I am present. Thank you, I'm Councillor Mather. Uh, good evening, present. Thank you, Councillor McLean. Councillor McLean. I return to Councillor McLean um, at the end. Councillor Gordon Smith, I see you are present. Yes, yeah, sorry, I had trouble getting on. I'm Thank you. Present. Thank you very much. Councillor Miller. Present and Councillor McLean is having trouble getting in. So can somebody try to help him, please? Thank you. Councillor Murphy. Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Pearson. Good evening, present. Councillor Porter. Good evening, present. Councillor Power. Good evening, I'm present, David. Thank you. Councillor Prince. Councillor Prince. I'll return to Councillor Prince um, at the end. Uh, Councillor Reid. Good evening, Mr Mayor, present. Councillor Raphael. Uh, good evening, I'm present. Councillor Rutter. Good evening, I'm here. Yes, present, thank you. Councillor Scott. Present, thanks. Councillor Thompson. Good evening, I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Todd. Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Weir. Good evening, I'm present. Councillor Weston. Good evening, I'm present. And Councillor Williams. Good evening, I'm present. Thank you. I'll just return now to uh, Councillor McLean. Um, is Councillor McLean in the meeting? No, Councillor Prince. I'm now in the meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Prince. Uh, one more try, Councillor McLean, otherwise um, colleagues will endeavour to help him into the meeting. Councillor McLean? Mr Mayor, um, I've done the roll call now. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Moving on to agenda item number one. The minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 4th of November 2020. May I sign these as a correct record? Agreed. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. That's okay. Item number two. Are there any disclosures of interest to be made regarding the business before us tonight? Uh, Chairman, I'd like to declare a personal interest. I'm also a county councillor. Thank uh, you, Councillor Jackie Porter. Porter. Yes, thank you, Councillor Porter. Um, this is Councillor Todd. I would also like to declare an interest as a county councillor. Thank you, Councillor Todd. Todd. And Councillor Hiscock as well. Thank you, Councillor Hiscock. Mr Mayor and myself, Councillor Humby, thank you. And Councillor Humby. Okay. No further declarations. Okay. Members, you will have seen from this evening's agenda that it includes some very special proceedings. Please can I welcome to the meeting our guests, their honours, Judge Angela Morris and Judge Keith Cutler. Welcome to you both. You. I'm going to move to agenda item number three, which is the appointment of the Honorary Recorder. The first item of business this evening is the appointment of Honorary Recorder. Please can I now call upon the proposer of the motion, the Leader of the Council, Councillor Lucille Thompson, to move the motion as set out on the agenda. Thank you very much, um, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, Honorary Recorder, members and officers, I'm absolutely delighted to, to be proposing the motion before you tonight to appoint a new Honorary Recorder, um, Her Honour Judge Angela Morris. Her Honour will take up the position as Resident Judge of Winchester and Salisbury later in the month and is an ideal candidate to 
be appointed as our honorary recorder. Her honour was called to the bar in 1984 and has a very distinguished background, serving as a barrister for 20 years, practising in crime and environmental law. On moving to Hampshire in 2004, she was appointed to the bench in 2010 and has for the past eight years been Deputy Resident Judge at Reading Crown Court. At, at this court for the last eight years, she has been, um, for the last seven years, she has had the role of the diversity and liaison judge. Her honour has been at the for forefront of introducing many innovative schemes, such as the introduction of the digital case system. And indeed, she has been mentioned in the Lord Chief Justice's annual report to Parliament, having organised a string of very successful open days at that court. The position of honorary recorder is an ancient and much valued role in the city, which dates back to 1408, when it was noted in the black book prepared for William the, uh, for Henry IV. William Wode was that first incumbent, and his job was to give legal advice to the city and to keep good records. It's believed that this may have started the very long tradition of legal expertise being focused in Winchester. I won't go into the history of this post now, but interestingly, and I've made a note of this and will be informing the Cabinet Member for Finance, um, that records show that back in 1746, the then recorder owned Abbey House. Mr Mayor, you had better watch out if her honour was to consider that her new position required a fine city abode in a central location. I can assure you that all reasonable offers would be duly considered, especially in the current turbulent economic climate that we're faced with today. But joking aside and moving on, as everyone is, is aware currently, we are very pleased to have been able to host our very own Nightingale Court in the Guildhall, set up to help deal with the backlog of cases that the, the pandemic has produced. We very much welcome this link with the judiciary and together with our recorder, we hope we can strengthen our partnership together. I know I speak for all when I say we are all really looking forward to the time when we can meet in person again and that our regular annual civic events, which our recorder has traditionally attended, will be able to resume once more. And at those events, we will then have the opportunity of welcoming Her Honour to those events and getting to know her in person. I'm delighted to move the motion. Leader, thank you. It would, it would be the stocks that would be awaiting her honour should she try to get the key to the Abbey House, I can tell you. <laughs> Please can I now call upon the seconder of the motion, Councillor Caroline Horrell. Good evening. Mr Mayor, your honours, officers, fellow councillors and members of the public. It is my privilege this evening on behalf of the Council to second the motion to appoint Her Honour Judge Angela Morris to the Office of Honorary Recorder upon her taking up the role of the Senior Circuit Judge, Resident Judge at Winchester and Salisbury Crown Courts with effect from the 18th of January. There has been a wonderful tradition in the Council to offer the recordership of Winchester to the senior circuit judge and the continuation of this tradition recognises and cements the relationship of the council and the law courts as an important part of the status, life and economy of Winchester. It has been a strong relationship and I know Her Honour wishes to continue to build on that working relationship in order that together we find the best ways to meet the challenges which the justice system faces. We all want to ensure that the overriding objectives of fairness and efficiency are always at the forefront of the court. Her Honour has had a role as the, as the diversity and liaison judge in Reading for several years and is also a contributor 
to the Equal Treatment Bench Book. And so I know we are in very good hands. Your Honour, we look forward to better times when we shall once again be able to invite you to civic functions. For you to be able to process with the council on occasions such as Remembrance Sunday and the Mayor's Sunday, and for us all to celebrate our very new relationship. Mr Mayor, I therefore second the motion that this council, in recognition of the relationship that exists between the city and the law courts, determines that the resident judge of the Winchester Combined Court Centre, Her Honour Judge Angela Morris, be appointed to the office of Honorary Recorder upon her taking up the role of Senior Circuit Judge, Resident Judge at Winchester Combined Court with effect from the 18th of January 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Horrell. Can I now put that motion to the meeting? Members, is that agreed? Agreed. 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 With agreed. I think that is definitely agreed. <laughs> Thank you. Please can I now invite Her Honour to respond? Mr Mayor. Leader of the Council, Councillor Caroline Horrell, members of the Council of Winchester, honoured guests, and my Lord, Judge Keith Cutler. I'm very privileged to be invited here this evening by the Council. And I am truly grateful, first of all, for the warm welcome with which I have been received. And secondly, to be allowed the opportunity to address you in accepting the honour which you have chosen to bestow upon me as the honorary recorder of this historic city of Winchester. As I begin to take on the position of Senior Circuit Judge and Resident Judge at Winchester Combined Courts. I knew when I made the application for this job, what an amazing opportunity that this was going to be. But I had no idea whatsoever of the extraordinary and marvellous perks absent the stocks, I hasten to add, that there are that appear to come with it. And as the Americans would say, in relation to the House, I'll take that one under advisement. I'm very fortunate indeed to be following in the footsteps of such an eminent senior circuit judge as Keith Cutler. And in taking on the responsibility of this important role at this tumultuous time. And in accepting this honour, I would like to reassure you that the strong partnership which has been forged between Winchester City Council and the judiciary at Winchester Combined Court will remain front and centre as an important part of my duty to the community and to you. And I will try to do that by following the example set by His Honour Judge Cutler. In 1675, Isaac Newton wrote a letter to his fellow scientist, Robert Hooke, in which he said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. I would like to borrow that phrase this evening in accepting this honour and the honorary recordership of this illustrious city because I recognise that if I am to see further it will be because I am also able to stand on the shoulders of a giant, namely those of his honour Judge Cutler. And to that end I hope 
with your assistance and the partnership forged to emulate his calm, sensible, fair and compassionate form of judicial leadership, to be inclusive and open to change where needed, whilst protecting the important traditions which come with this great office and responsibility. For those of you who know Judge Cutler, you will be aware of his many talents. And so it is only right that in accepting this honour, I also tell you that I am unlikely to be persuaded to take up the onerous extra responsibility of part-time supermodel, as he did, or to be both judge and jury in the same trial. But leaving those two things aside, I shall seek to follow the example set by Judge Cutler in serving the community of this historic city of Winchester and beyond to the best of my ability and with, the, with a degree of fairness, objectivity, charm and compassion that has been shown through, by him throughout his tenure as a senior circuit judge and resident judge of Winchester and Salisbury combined courts. And so in conclusion, I would like to thank all of you who serve the community by giving of your time as members of the council for this historic and illustrious city, for the honour you have bestowed upon me this evening. I promise to do my level best to meet the high standards which you have come to expect and thereby to continue to forge a partnership of equal depth, understanding and respect as has been enjoyed between the court and the City Council to date for many, many years. I look forward too to the time when we will be able to meet under one roof, absent of social distancing and face masks to celebrate this, uh, this honour, but more importantly, to publicly acknowledge the indispensable part which His Honour Judge Cutler has played in the dispensation of justice in this historic city. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judge Morris, and congratulations on your appointment. As a council, we look forward to working with you, and I hope that we will soon be able to meet in person to celebrate your appointment. Your Honour, you are now, of course, welcome to remain in the meeting, as we will now celebrate as a council the service of outgoing Honorary Recorder of Winchester, His Honour, Judge Keith Cutler. Your Honour, Judge Cutler, welcome once again. For this agenda item, I will now call upon the Leader of the Council, Councillor Lucille Thompson, the proposer of the vote of thanks to the retiring Honorary Recorder, His Honour, Judge Keith Cutler. Leader, would you please move the motion as set out on the agenda? Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, uh, um, everyone, I am very happy to move that the best thanks of the Council be accorded to His Honour, Judge Keith Cutler, for his service to the City as Honorary Recorder for the period 2009 to 2021. Members, I think we would all agree that His Honour has been an exemplary recorder for Winchester. Over the years, he has been extremely diligent in leading our local court system um, and additionally has always been a very, very welcome presence at the many civic events held um, throughout the year. And he has done this over the years with grace, charm and good humour. There is no doubt that we have been in the company of a very highly regarded individual as well as a long distinguished and distinguished career in law spanning just short of 50 years, he has received a number of honours along the way. In the 2010 New Year's Honours List, he received the award of Commander of the British Empire. 
and relatively recently in 2019 also received an honorary doctorate in law at the University of Winchester. I'm sure that it is a matter of regret that his last year in office has been marred by events beyond all of our control. However, undeterred by the effects of the pandemic, he has been at the forefront of ensuring that jury trials continued to be held in Winchester. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of us all to thank him for his leadership in this important area. Indeed, if members are inclined to learn what was done to ensure that the court could operate, there is a helpful video on YouTube featuring his honour, explaining the measures that the courts were taking to ensure that trials could still take place up at the law courts um, uh, in at the castle. On a personal note, I feel that because of the, the pandemic, I feel I've not had the opportunity to get to know him in the way that most other leaders of the council would have done. However, on one of our very first meetings, I do remember a conversation I had with his honour, advising me the importance of taking holidays. I did, of course, try to take his advice on board, but I have to say that although I might not have been in the office much for the previous nine months, it was not the kind of holiday that I or anyone else had in mind. Mr Mayor, his honour has been a keen supporter of civic functions and other events, and I know that I speak for everyone at this meeting today that we wish, we wish him all the very best in his retirement. So, Your Honour, thank you for all you have done for the city in protecting and ensuring the links we have with the judiciary are maintained. Thank you for your leadership and for the sage advice that you have given over the years. And last but certainly not least, thank you for carrying out your duties so diligently and being such an engaging guest. We will, of course, be keeping you on our invite list for civic events in the future, and I do so sincerely hope that we will see you at some of some of them. So, Mr Mayor, um, I'm very happy again to move the motion that the best thanks of the Council be accorded to His Honour Judge Keith Cutler for his service to the city as honorary recorder for the period 2009 to 2021. Thank you very much. Leader, thank you. Please can I now call upon the seconder of the motion, Councillor Caroline Horrell. Mr Mayor, thank you. Mr Mayor, your honours, it is my privilege again this evening on behalf of the Council to second the motion before us. The Office of Honorary Recorder is an ancient and esteemed position in the Council and in the City. In the 1600s, the Judiciary and Council seemed to have been on opposite sides of the Civil War, as the City Councillors were removed from their posts by the courts because they were Royalists. Winchester Castle was sacked by the par Parliamentarians, leaving only the Great Hall standing. This at least made way for the erection of the law courts on the cleared site, although the planning process seems to have been rather slow. To get from cleared site to current law courts just took 300 years. His Honour has been very much uh, continuing in the tradition of the honorary recorder and has been an advocate for the legal profession in the city during his time in office. We have enjoyed and benefited from his company and his strong legal leadership. His honour has also enthusiastically supported the civic functions during this time. I have stood alongside him in the cathedral where he has sung with great enthusiasm at our services. His honour has kept us in good order and in line as we processed through the city. And we have very much enjoyed his great sense of humour at our events. It has been a personal delight to have enjoyed your company, Your Honour. 
We now hope you will have more time to spend with Judith and the family. And we thank you for your outstanding contribution to our city and our district. Mr Mayor, I therefore second the motion that the best thanks of the council be accorded to His Honour Keith Cutler for his service to the city as honorary recorder for the period 2009 to 2021. I so move. Thank you, Councillor Horrell. Please can I now put the motion to the meeting that the best thanks of the council be accorded to His Honour Keith Cutler for his service to the city as honorary recorder for the period 2009 to 2021. Agreed. Members, Agreed. is that right? Agreed. 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 I think that's a definite yes, and thank you so much, everyone. But thank you. Now, please, can I invite his honour to respond? I thank uh, the mayor and the councillors uh, for the vote of thanks. And I thank and I think of all those marvellous years, 11 years, I have been the recorder of Winchester. Uh, throughout my time as the recorder, you have all been so kind, so generous and supportive uh, and so much fun. You've been very entertaining. Uh, although perhaps uh, more so than perhaps you should have been. But the contact between the City Council and the Law Courts has been invaluable uh, and one which I have been striving very hard to keep, maintain and prosper. I have served as Recorder with enormous pride. It is a prestigious title. It's meant that in court I get called my Lord. Uh, my successor will be called, obviously, my lady. And it's also meant that I have had the advantage of entertaining mayors and other visitors and dignitaries at the courts. Indeed, uh, I particularly uh, want to mention the mayors. I, there are, I think, um, six or seven of you here listening tonight as uh, serving councillors. And each year you have been very kind to come and sit with me for a day or longer sometimes and seen some of the human misery that goes on further up in the city of Winchester. So thank you all. Uh, it's quite inappropriate for me as a judge to say to politicians, but I do say I, I love you all. You have been so marvellous and it's with some sadness but gratitude that I relinquish the honour that you have given me. However, I am very pleased to be able to introduce and to uh, support, as I do, my very worthy successor, uh, and I wish uh, Her Honour Judge uh, Angela Morris all the very best. And uh, many, many years may she be and enjoy, as I know she will, being the recorder of Winchester. But in short, I'm really looking forward to meeting you all again sometime in the future. But for the moment, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you so much, Your Honour. I understand that two of our previous mayors may now like to say a few words. Please may I call upon Councillor Pearson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, Your Honours, fellow councillors, <coughs> many will know the honorary recorder's activities supporting uh, of the ceremonial roles such as Mayor Sunday, Lord Sunday, Remember Sunday, when he was accompanied by his wife Judith serving the city Winchester with pride. But things always don't go quite as one might think. Uh, Judge Morris has referred to the instance where he had to give himself permission uh, not to serve on a jury in his own court. A little unusual and I think a little unique. But one of the highlights of the mayoral year is to be invited to sit with the resident judge in the Crown Court as Keith, if I may just refer to him as Keith, has been as just mentioned. I've been lucky enough to do this on several occasions having been mayor on two occasions myself. To go to the Winchester Crown Court as the mayor of Winchester is always interesting. But from a snowy swamwell early in 2019, there were problems. 
The roads were treacherous and we, my wife and I, got no farther than Bishop's Waltham, three miles down the road, when it became obvious we weren't going any further. A phone call to the court uh, with our apologies saying, explaining the problem. Oh good, came the voice at the other end of the phone. A little startling. Judge Cutler is stuck in his snowdrift and he can't get in either. So clearly he couldn't control the weather. The courts for that day were cancelled. On a happy occasion, Anne and I were invited to dinner at the judge's lodgings on a glorious summer evening. The guest of honour was the Lord Chief Justice of England. A television sat in the corner of the dining room. It turned discreetly in our direction behind a number of the ladies and the judge's eyes were of course on the screen because England was playing football in the World Cup. The loudest cheer at an England goal came from, well that is my secret. Even the most eminent pe people like to relax. So thank you Keith for the privilege of being with you during your formal and informal moments and may my wife and I wish you a very happy retirement. Yeah, here. Yeah. Please can I now call upon Councillor Evans. Councillor Evans. Thank you Mr Mayor. Your Honour, Judge Cutler, Keith. Um, as the longest serving past mayor and as mother of the house, I have been asked to add a final thanks from the mayoralty to you. There is a bit of symmetry here as I was the councillor to propose you as our honorary recorder back in 2009. Keith, you have played a full part in Winchester's civic life in your 11 plus years with us. You and your wife, Judith, have driven over on a regular basis from Salisbury and have rarely missed a civic event. We have appreciated your support for the mayoralty as well as your fun, your sense of humour, your courtesy and charm. Your enthusiasm and warmth towards people have added much to the role. As the leader has already mentioned, we do hope this is not a goodbye, but just au revoir. Keith, at this point, had we been together in the council chamber, we would have given you a standing ovation. This seems unworkable when we are all sitting separately at our own homes, but what we can do is give you a resounding three cheers. So, councillors, Will you please unmute your microphones so that I can lead three cheers for his honour, Judge Keith Cutler. <laughs> so I'll give you a moment to unmute. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you all. Thank you all. Very well deserved, I have to say as well. Your Honour, may I also take this opportunity to offer my own and my wife's thanks to you as well and the gratitude from the city for your valuable contribution and wish you a very, very rewarding retirement. Thank you again, Your Honour. I would also like to invite you, if I may please, to continue to attend our special civic events as our honoured guest and friend. Finally, I do hope that we will soon be able to meet in person to celebrate your time in office and to congratulate our new honorary recorder as well. Your honours, you are both now very welcome to remain in the meeting, but I please ask that you now turn off your camera and mute your microphone. Alternatively, you can leave the meeting and listen to the live audio stream from the Council's website. But thank you both once again.
I now move on to item number five on the Council's agenda, announcements from the Mayor, the Leader and the Chief Executive. My first announcement this evening is with regard to former Councillor and past Mayor Georgie Busher, who passed away in November. Georgie was friends with her fellow Ward Councillor for Bishop's Waltham and past Mayor Jean Hammerton, who sadly left us a few weeks prior. Georgie was first elected to the Council in 1976 and was Mayor of Winchester from, 20, from 2000 to, 20, to 2001. She served on many committees and was Chair of the Planning Committee for several years. I was also saddened to have to learn that the very Reverend James Atwell, former Dean of Winchester, died shortly before Christmas. I have written care of Winchester Cathedral to send condolences to his wife, Lorna. With regards to recent engagements, as mentioned earlier, I attended the funeral of former Mayor of Winchester, Jean Hammerton. I have also attended the virtual AGMs of the following Winchester charities in November. Winchester Night Shelter, Trinity Winchester, Winchester Youth Carers, Winchester Go LD, Carroll Centre, Citizens Advice Bureau and the National Trust Winchester. Members may also have seen that I had recorded special Christmas messages for schools in the Winchester district and also the care home staff and residents. My next announcement is with regard to the Queen's New Year's Honours and I have written to the following recipients. Commanders of the Order of the British Empire, CBE, Margaret Adela Miriam Carver from Winchester, for services to sport and to the media sector. Officers of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, Gavin John Edgerly Harris from Winchester, Director, Gurkha Museum, for services to Gurkha and military heritage. Edward, Edgar Joseph Fushtwanger from Winchester. Historian, for services to Anglo-German understanding and history. Members of the Order of the British Empire, MBE. Christine Beresford, Chair of Trustees, Whitchurch Silk Mill Trust and Winchester Military Museum for services to cultural heritage in Hampshire. Richard Hugh Osgood from Winchester, Senior Archaeologist, Defence Infrastructure Organisation for services to defence and to heritage. Vivian Loveday from Bishop Swartham for services to the community in Bishop Swartham, Hampshire. I can confirm also that the annual Mayor's Awards will still go ahead this year, but of course, in a different way. I will be recording a message of support and thanks for all those who are nominated. The recipients will be sent a certificate and a pin badge together with a letter of thanks for all of their work. Finally this evening, members, please may I pass on the best wishes received from Mayor David Smith from Winchester, Virginia. Many of you will know that a number of our past mayors have visited during the apple blossom time. Mayor David visited us in the UK during Councillor Eleanor Bell's time as mayor. Mayor David reports that he has been re-elected to serve his community for a further term of office. Leader, do you have any announcements? Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's really more of an, a statement than an announcement. Um, members, you will recall the last time we met that I made a statement on where we were with the pandemic as we went into the second national lockdown. And I had hoped, as we all had, that at this council meeting, the very first one in 2021, we would be looking towards a rosier future with the vaccine being rolled out. Yeah. <laughs> 
However, the new variant has put paid to that for the time being, and we are once again in lockdown with infection rates on the rise and hospital admissions reaching alarming levels. These national restrictions were not, met, not how many of us hoped to start the new year. But it is really important that we all play our part in the coming weeks to prevent further transmission of the virus. So please follow the advice and stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. This is an incredibly tough time for our residents and businesses across the district. And I want to reassure everyone that the City Council is here for you. We are committed to continue to provide essential services to residents and businesses, including maintaining critical frontline services such as the waste collections, supporting individuals or groups who are identified as, at, as most at risk, from COVID, supporting businesses who have been forced to close and working with those who can still offer a takeaway only service. And also enabling and supporting the valuable work of community groups and individuals who are taking practical action to help their neighbours. Of course, one of the best ways of keeping up to date with news on the pandemic and other matters is by visiting our website and signing up to our regular resident newsletter. And I would encourage all members to publicise this. Finally, I would like to thank all our staff, partners and those in the voluntary sector who are having to step up once more in the face of this national crisis. Together, we have all been working so hard to keep the virus under control, and it is vital that we continue to follow the advice, which I, I repeat is stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Chief Executive, do you have any announcements? Thank you, Mr. I have apologies from Councillor Griffiths, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Moving on now to item number six on the agenda, questions for members of the public. Please can I welcome members of the public who have been invited to attend this evening and have submitted questions for councils to, offer, to answer. Please can I ask until your, I call your name that you keep your microphone muted and your camera switched off. Thank you. I understand that we've received four questions for this evening's meeting. All members have copies of the questions received which have been circulated electronically and have also been published on the Council's website. Please can I now call upon Jan Warwick and Councillor David Killeen Please, can you confirm that you are present this evening? Yes. I, I don't think we are. Are they present? We can see Councillor Warwick. I can see yeah, Councillor Warwick. Mr. Mayor, we're just not picking up the audio at the moment, so we'll just take a moment to check that. Yeah. Into the other. Yeah. 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 I'm here. Okay, right. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me, Councillor Warwick? Mm -hmm. Councillor Warwick, it appears it's your connection. Some interference. You could perhaps. I'm muted now. Um, and you're muted now. We can't hear you, Councillor Warwick. Perhaps you're a co presenter. Question. Try again. Try once again, Councillor Warwick. No, I think she's gone. Has she gone? Perhaps our other, the other colleague who wished to ask the question could present the question for Council, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Councillor. I am Councillor here. Killeen. David Killeen. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, Councillor Killeen. Can you please ask Councillor Warwick's question, please, as it's written on the order paper? Yes, or I if, can. Or if I you prefer, can. simply refer members to this. I'm happy you to have, do that. 
you will have two minutes to ask your question. A reminder, that, a reminder that following the response given by the member, you may also ask one supplementary question which must arise directly out of the original question or reply. Please ask your question now. I'm happy to do that and good evening. Um, Winchester City Council has published a carbon neutrality uh, action plan with the goal of the whole district being carbon neutral by 2030. To achieve this goal and to maintain it post 2030, will the redevelopment of brownfield sites and sites like brownfield sites to make the best use of that resource have a key part to play in the council's response to the climate emergency it has declared? Over 4,200 people support such an approach. Will the council take note of such a strong expression of the importance of making the most of brownfield sites and be proactive in identifying and bringing forward such sites? Thank you very much, Councillor King. Councillor Porter, can you please respond? You're muted, Jackie. The, trying to be careful. Uh, Councillor Colleen and Councillor Warwick, um, thank you very much for your question. The City Council is fully committed to making the most use of brownfield sites and this will be a key part of the strategy. However, as the local plan covers the period up to 2038 and at the moment we have relatively few true brownfield sites, even taking into consideration the current housing commitments and allocations we already have, it's likely that the local plan will not be able to satisfy its, de its demand relying solely on brownfield sites in order to meet the housing requirements that have been set by government. As part of the forthcoming local plan consultation, which is due to start next month, it would be really helpful if local people could identify more brownfield sites that they consider could be redeveloped so that the council can assess them and establish if they actually are available for redevelopment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Porter. Uh, I understand that Councillor Colleen is to ask a supplementary question. Councillor. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, my question is, there are key sites not currently on the Council's limited brownfield register, such as Station Approach and Sir John Moore Barracks, for example. The Government's proposed planning changes will allow an even wider range of existing buildings, such as offices, that could be converted to housing. So how and when will the Council undertake a more robust assessment of these sites, in addition to those put forward in the Sheila? and actively assess the brownfield potential across the district. Thank you, Councillor Clean. Um, every year the council asks uh, the public uh, for a uh, their proposals for brownfield sites and for uh, any other developable sites right across the district. And you'll see on the council's website the Sheila for 181920 and also the brownfield sites register. Um, you will note as well that the definition of a brownfield site is actually uh, described in the National Planning Framework, the NPPF, and then it's uh, also explained in the under the item not only of brownfield sites but also previously developed land, and and so the definition of brownfield is very specific. However. We do want to for the public to uh, come forward with all of those sites and I think we'll, we will make it clear what is clearly defined as a brownfield site and which is a site that is clearly able to be developed such as St John Moore Barracks which you met specifically mentioned and, and that can go forward within those plans. So I can assure you that it's as an open and transparent method as possible to make sure that the sites that come forward for development are listed as whether they're brownfield or developable, developable under the Sheila. Um, at the moment, we only have, uh, I think it's 18 or 19 sites for 2019, um, as were in 2018, uh, when I think uh, Councillor Warwick was on the City Council. So it is important to encourage as many members of the public to bring forward those sites. Uh, I totally agree, and we'll be advertising that in uh, February and March this year. Thank you, Councillor Porter, and to Councillors Cal Warwick and Colleen for your question. Please may I remind you that your question and the answer will be published on the Council's website in due course. 
Councillor Warwick and Colleen, may I please ask that you now turn off your cameras and mute your microphones for the remainder of the meeting. You are welcome to remain in the meeting. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can leave by pressing the telephone symbol with the red background. Of course, you can continue to listen to the live audio stream from the Council's website. And thank you once again. Please can I now call upon Andy Lai, who has also submitted a question. Mr Lai, can you confirm that you are present this evening? I am present, uh, Mr Mayor. Thank you and welcome. Please can you also ask your question as it is written on the order paper, or if you prefer, simply refer members to this. You will have two minutes to ask your question. A reminder that following the response given by the member, you may also ask one supplementary question which must arise directly out of the original question or the reply. Understand. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and all members of the Council. Thank you very much for allowing me to ask a question on behalf of some residents uh, of Winchester. My question is very brief. Uh, could the Cabinet members please advise me of the Council's position on the issue of remote consultation for major issues relating to uh, Winchester residents? Because it may exclude some groups without internet access. For example, the development of Sir John Moore Barrick on Andover Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Lai, very much. Councillor Thompson, please, can you respond? Um, yes, thank you very, very much, Mr Mayor, and um, thank you for your question, Mr Lai. Um, of course, we all look forward to the time when we can carry out face-to-face -face consultation, but that just isn't possible for the time being. Um, as a result, we've taken the opportunity to use virtual meetings, exhibitions and conferences to engage and inform local residents of the work we are doing. We do, of course, understand that not everyone is able to participate in, in online events, and we have been using other methods to reach out to ensure those that wanted to take part were given the opportunity to do so. And I, I will just give two examples of recent work where other methods were used. The consultation on central Winchester regeneration, including an advertisement placed in the local newspaper and posters were put up at the Guild Hall. In addition, we sent flyers out to all parish councils so that they could print and put posters up too. The posters gave information on how residents could obtain hard copies of the consultation information and feedback forms. The second example was the consultation carried out for the Winchester Town Forum vision. This included a number of one to one in depth conversations carried out over the phone, and this was also supplemented by Vox Pop interviews recorded on the street during the summer when restrictions were relaxed. As far as Sir John Moore Barracks is concerned, as I'm sure you will know, the site is owned by the Ministry of Defence and any consultation with local residents would in the first instance be for them as the developer to carry out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Mr Lai, would you like to ask a supplementary question? Well, uh, if I am allowed, I would uh, pinpoint on the access of internet, uh, not just on consultation, because uh, I pretty sure uh, the council may understand uh, if somebody want to book a simple uh, medical appointment to their GP surgery, nowadays you have to uh, use the internet, uh, they call it e-consult, and it looked like the computer is a must. I just wonder, is any help from the city council to those one is uh, have a difficulty to get uh, access to internet or computer. So, I, Councillor Thompson, for a reply. Right. Well, that's quite a difficult one to answer because, of course, in normal times we have um, had um, uh, access to. Um, uh, 
computers and certainly the ability to uh, be helped uh, to, to use um, an online process um, via our customer services and also um, other uh, facilities such as um, libraries have access to computers. Um, of course, um, in, in COVID times, um, we're not able to do that. Um, our customer services, however, are open in terms of on the telephone and um, if if residents have any problems with access, accessing information or um, help in any way, um, they are very welcome to ring the customer services and um, we will help them wherever we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. And to Mr Lai for your questions. Your question and the answer will be published on the Council's website in due course. Mr Lai, may I please ask that you now turn off your camera and mute your microphone for the remainder of the meeting. You are welcome to remain at the meeting. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can leave by pressing the telephone symbol with the red background. Of course, you can continue to listen to the live audio stream from the Council's website. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I will turn off the microphone and wish you have a very smooth meeting tonight. Thank you very much. The next question I have is, is from Kim Gottlieb, who has submitted a question. Mr Gottlieb, can you confirm that you are present this evening? I can. <clears throat> Welcome to you. Please can you ask your question as it is written on the order paper, or if you prefer, simply refer members to this. You will have two minutes to ask your question. A reminder that following the response given by the member, you may also ask one supplementary question which must arise directly out of the original reply or question. Uh, good evening. Well, good evening, Mr Mayor, and uh, Happy New Year. Um, the North Walls Pavilion is a jewel of a building and being involved with its progress was one of the things I most enjoyed in my time as a councillor. It is not just the wonderful facility it would provide for residents across the city and beyond, but that it shows how the council could work with the community as it says on the leaflet. It would also show that the council was prepared to promote high quality civic architecture, modern examples of which are few and far between. The proposal might be a very modest amount over budget, but it has the great advantage over any, over any alternative idea of being fully designed and costed and ready to go. Any, t any alternative idea would take several years and much more money to bring to the same point while this proposal is, as some might say, oven ready. It's understood that money is tight across the board, but there are so many public benefits in progressing the scheme. I would ask the leader, can she please kindly provide an assurance that every possible effort will be made by the council to ensure that the current proposal is built and gives everyone something to celebrate in 2021. Mr Gottlieb, thank you very much. Councillor Lerny, please can you respond? Um, it was addressed um, to the it's, it's actually me, Mr Mayor, Councillor Thompson. Oh, OK, fine. <laughs> Councillor Thompson, take it on board. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor, and um, thank you for your question, um, Kim. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, council plans to replace the existing cricket pavilion on North Walls recreation ground go back as far as 2016. The town forum initially set aside 300,000 to fund the replacement and we're very pleased to note that community led proposals for a larger more ambitious facility funded by public donations and or sponsorship. Since that time, the Council and the Town Forum in particular has fully supported the Pavilion project proposals, including funding the planning application process and providing extensions of time to allow the project to raise additional funding pledges, which currently total 155,000, plus an additional 50,000 from Sport England. In January 2020, 
The Town Forum approved a further £295,000 funding to ensure the project could proceed, subject to total costs not exceeding £800,000. Unfortunately, following the recent tender process, it is clear that the proposed pavilion will cost well in excess of 900,000 to build, even after allowing for some significant compromises to the design and specification. I cannot agree that £100,000 is a very modest amount, particularly with the Council having to reduce budgets by over £3 million in 2021. 20, uh, that said, the current 595,000 council funding remains available to support the project and the town forum remains committed to delivering a replacement pavilion at North Walls, as well as the long promised replacement for the pavilions at the King George V playing fields. Officers are meeting with representatives of the pavilion project to discuss the scope to amend designs to bring it within the available budget and the town form will review options at its meeting on the 28th of January. Um, thank you. It was really a question of assurance that all effort will be made to, uh, to make it happen. And I think it's worth clarifying, if I may, for, for the benefit of other members, that the pavilion group, the project group, isn't asking the council for any more money at this time. All it's asking for is the opportunity for the architects to run a normal value engineering exercise based on the current scheme to see if the if the cost can be reduced. Um, this idea that it might, you know, the council is committed to uh, to the project is is, is um, a shorthand for some time in the future. And as we all know, these things can, you know, run to several years before we see them come round again. So if I may ask you as a supplementary, can you please provide an assurance that the project team and the architects will be given the opportunity to see if they can get the cost down to a, to a level that your you and uh, your colleagues are happy with. Um, Gottlieb, I'm assuming that that is your supplementary question. It is. Thank you. Um, well, I would like to reassure you, as, as I said in, in my answer to the original question, we are having meetings with the architect um, and the pavilion project um, itself, and we will be doing all that we can to bring the project in in line with the budget. Thank you very much indeed, thank Councillor Thompson. Much. So, Councillor Thompson and Mr Gottlieb, thank you very much for your question and the answer will be published on the Council's website in due course. Mr Gottlieb, may I thank you and you now turn off your camera and mute your microphone for the remainder of the meeting. You are welcome, of course, to remain in the meeting. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can leave by pressing the telephone symbol with the red background. Of course, you can continue to listen to the live audio stream from the Council's website, but thank you once again. Please can I now call upon Yvette Riley, who has also submitted a question. Ms Riley, please can you confirm that you are present this evening? I am present. Welcome to you. Please can you also ask your question as it is written on the order paper, or if you prefer, simply refer members to this. You will have two minutes as usual to ask the question. A reminder, that following the response given by the member, you may also ask one supplementary question, which must arise directly out of the original question or the reply. Over to you. Thank you. Um, good evening, councillors, and thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question concerns the local NHS and the Hampshire Together project that's currently being led by the Hampshire Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. The project um, aims to deliver a new hospital to serve the people of North and Mid Hampshire and the reconfiguration of clinical services at the Royal County Hospital um, in, here in Winchester. Um, and I do understand that the legal responsibility for scrutiny of this project will be done by Hampshire County Council's Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Um, but given this project is likely to have wide implications um, for the services offered, the health services offered to the people of Winchester, I'd like to ask the council um, how they plan to engage with the Hampshire Together project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Thompson again, please. 
um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, um, and thank you, uh, Mrs. Riley, for your for your question. Um, council officers and members are represented on the Hampshire Hospitals Together Modernising Our Hospitals and Health Services project. The project leaders have also presented current options to council members and to representatives of local parish councils. We continue to stress the importance to that all residents of the Winchester district have a wide range of opportunities to review, comment on options and contribute to debate throughout the public consultation process, particularly in the light of the limited scope for public meetings currently. Public consultation is due to begin after the elections in May and will last for several months. Residents will be able to have their say in many ways, from filling out a paper survey to attending an online meeting, and plans are still being finalised to ensure as wide a response as possible. The councils in the, in the involvement in the process will continue do, during 2021. As well as supporting the public consultation process, the Council will discuss and seek more information on the implications of the options proposed with our wider group of health and wellbeing partners. The counties, uh, the County Council's health, o health Overview and Scrutiny Committee is looking at the proposal from a Hampshire-wide viewpoint. Our response to the consultation is so important for patients and employees. We want our representatives to, to secure the best possible outcome, specifically for the citizens of Winchester District. Winchester's residents, who let's face it, will be predominantly the patients, visitors and hospital employees are diverse and come from many parts of the district, including the city centre itself and everyone's perspective of the proposals for the service changes must be considered in our response. We will be creating a formal opportunity for councillors representing wards right across the district to hear those views and then contribute to the response from Winchester City Council. For even greater transparency, the paper will go through our scrutiny committee, the normal uh, process for a decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Ms Riley, would you like to ask a supplementary question? If I may, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Thompson, for your, um, Thompson, for your um, comprehensive answer. I, I have been concerned about this and I am reassured to hear that the Council have set up processes to um, participate in the project and also hear people's, uh, citizens of Winchester's concerns about uh, the project as it is developing and shaping up. Um, I did actually have a quick look at the um, Hampshire County Council Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee um, membership and I noticed there were no elected representatives from the Winchester District and um, so that's why I have become even more concerned. So it is good to hear um, that the City Council are um, you know on top of this and are looking to um, to kind of plug the gap to make sure that Winchester citizens do have a voice. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much and thank you for the question. Thank you, Councillor Thompson and to Ms Riley for your questions. Your questions and the answers will be published on the Council's website in due course. Ms Riley, may I now ask that you turn off your camera and mute your microphone for the remainder of the meeting. You are, Thanks. of course, welcome to remain in the meeting. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can leave by pressing the telephone symbol with the red background. Of course, you can continue to listen to the live audio stream of, from the Council's website. But thank you once again. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think I'll pop off and listen on YouTube. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. I'm moving on now to Agenda Item 7A, recommended minutes of the Cabinet held on the 16th of December 2020. Ms Kirkman. Mr Mayor, thank you. Agenda Item 7A is the recommended minute of Cabinet of 16th of December 2020, which is set out on page 11 of your agenda pack. Report Cab 3255 refers, and this is also in your agenda pack from page 13. The report's recommendations are with regard to approval of a new income banded council tax reduction scheme for working age applicants with effect from the 1st of April 2021. Thank you. Okay. 
Councillor Cutler, would you move the recommended minute of cabinet, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members, on the 16th of September 2020, Cabinet gave approval to consult on the proposed changes to the Council Tax Reduction Scheme for working age applicants. Changes to the scheme have become necessary uh, with the introduction of universal credit, which has led to, led to the current uh, means tested scheme uh, be, to be no longer fit for purpose. The current scheme causes claimants to be um, reluctant to claim promptly, and the high number of changes to universal credit mean continual changes to the um, council tax reduction entitlement. On average, 40% of universal credit claimants have 8 to 12 changes to their entitlement each year, which makes the current council tax reduction scheme administratively very costly and complex. The proposed new scheme simplifies the process by introducing an income banded uh, system, the details of which are set out in the paper with a series of income disregards. The new system has been tested against existing claimants to ensure that there are very few claimants that would lose out. An exceptional hardship fund will deal with these cases. The scheme maintains the City Council's very generous 100% um, maximum uh, reduction. Um, the results of the consultation are included in your papers. A majority of respondents supported all the proposals bar the proposal to reduce um, the limit on claimant capital held from £16,000 to £6,000. The Revenue and Benefits team have rerun the model without changing the £16,000 limit and found that it is possible to run the scheme while maintaining that £16,000 limit. This is the sole amendment to the scheme presented uh, for consultation in uh, Cabinet. The new scheme will simplify the administration and encourage more prompt applications. It will continue to provide a very generous scheme and I commend this to, to Council. Thank you very much, Councillor Cutler. Do I have a seconder? Um, I, I second the motion and reserve my right to speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions? I have. I have first question. Councillor Godfrey. Councillor Godfrey. Godfrey, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, just got a bright light behind me. Um, I'm grateful for the introduction by uh, Councillor Cutler, uh, who clarified um, uh, some of the benefits of the scheme. Um, I, and I note from a paper that the scheme is designed to cost the council no more than the scheme that it replaces. Um, can you just uh, uh, clarify a bit more on uh, the impact of, on claimants? How will they benefit from this revised scheme? Councillor Cutler, please respond. Uh, thank you, Councillor Godfrey. Um, I think the main benefits for claimants will be that um, they will be able to make claims more promptly. The changes to universal credit in most cases will not result in an, the need for a recalculation. Um, and so therefore there will be a fairly consistent, um, they will know exactly what, what level of reduction they have over, over time. I mean, there will be occasion where changes in universal credit will cause a change in, in banding, but in most cases, uh, the, the continual changes that happen within universal credit um, will not affect the council tax reduction. Um, the other benefit is that, uh, as I say, not only will they, claimants be able to claim quite more promptly, um, they, they will also be able to backdate claims uh, far more easily. So these are the, the main benefits for claimants. Thank you, Councillor Cutler. I have no more questions on this matter, and so I'm going to move straight on to debate. Councillor Godfrey, please. Agree. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I welcome the revised scheme 
that we are asked to endorse this evening. Um, the simplification of the application and renewal process uh, and the more stable banding arrangements will both reduce the resource costs for this authority uh, and benefit the um, uh, claimants. I was very proud to introduce the first council tax reduction scheme in 2013. It retained the benefits of a scheme that it replaced and allowed us to improve the scheme in significant ways. So Winchester could rightly claim to have the best council tax reduction scheme in the country, bringing real benefits to the most vulnerable in our community. I hope that there is an aspiration from the current administration to retain ownership of that title. I support this uh, um, passing of this minute. I'm going to move straight on as I have no one else wishing to enter the debate to Councillor Lurney. Councillor Lurney. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, in the spirit of summing up the debate, I think it's quite clear that when people are in need, we should give help as soon as possible, not sometime in the remote future. Um, overall, the new scheme is equally generous to those who qualify for it, but less onerous on both claimants and our staff. So I think we should all be welcoming this paper and supporting the new scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Learning. Councillor Cutler, would you wish to sum up, please? Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I don't think that I have much to add. One of the things I would like to say is uh, to... to um, thank the, the revenue and benefits team for the tremendous amount of work they've done in, in, in producing this new scheme, which they've tested and tested again. And particularly that they've managed to do this at a time where they have been um, overwhelmed by the additional work of paying out um, uh, the, the, the grants. So it's, it's a tremendous achievement to be able to produce such a good scheme um, to introduce uh, from the 1st of April. So, um, yes, I, I propose um, and hope that Council can uh, support the scheme. Thank you, Councillor Cutler. Members, is the recommended minute of the Cabinet on page 11 of the agenda pack agreed? All those in favour? Agreed. 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 All those against? All those abstaining? That recommended minute is agreed. Agenda item number eight, notices of motion. The agenda sets out a notice of motion to be moved by Councillor Godfrey. Councillor Godfrey, do you have a seconder for your motion, please? Yes, I do, Mr Mayor. That's uh, Councillor Brooke. Thank you, Councillor Brooke. I second this motion and I'd like to reserve my right to speak, please, Mr Mayor. That's fine. Councillor Godfrey, would you present your motion, please? May I remind you, you have a maximum of eight minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to start by reassuring colleagues that this motion is not seeking to predetermine the contents of a revised local plan, um, but to make sure that the local plan, when it comes forward, can be shaped by those who might might be most affected by it. I am sure that you'll all agree that the views, opinions and wishes of the residents of Winchester must be reflected accurately and fully in the local plan. This is always really difficult and the restrictions brought by the pandemic make it even more so. When the current local plan was emerging under the leadership of councillors Rob Humby and Vicky Weston, the consultation with the public earned praise from residents and awards for the council. The huge effort made on consultation also generated consider considerable levels of acceptance for the local plan from residents, making its implementation much easier. This all seems unlikely this time round, with a pandemic and the apparent reluctance of the administration to trust the public with any meaningful role in shaping policy. With this motion, 
I am seeking ways to ensure that the local plan will be more easily accepted by those we represent. The withdrawal of proposals to change the way our housing numbers are calculated means that changes to the local plan should not require a fundamental redrawing of the maps of Winchester. Moving up from our current target of 12,500 new homes in the period 2031 to around 14,000 new homes by 2038 can be met in a number of ways, some less controversial than others. Using a measure of the environmental impact of each approach seems a sensible way to proceed, and one which should be supported by many. But, the level of, but, but that level of support outside this virtual chamber does need to be carefully assessed. We would all like to think that we have a finger on the pulse of what our neighbours think. Without being able to knock on doors, attend public meetings, or even distribute leaflets for fear of spreading the virus, we must find ways to demonstrate that the far-reaching proposals in the new local plan do have the support of residents. Any local plan that requires an increase in the amount of development across the district will need to consider allocating land that has never been developed before. Building on the countryside is never popular and usually has a significant environmental impact. Loss of habitat, more people making longer journeys to work and to amenities, consequential development of new infrastructure and so on. So we must be able to show that these changes have been discussed in detail with residents and have gained acceptance from them. All greenfield land in Winchester falls within one of the parish or town councils. The Winchester Town Forum area does not include any rural areas, so it is not affected by this motion. The parish and town councils generally have a very thorough understanding of the local needs and aspirations of their area, and most residents have a comparatively high level of trust in their parish or town council. We must fully engage with them as the new local plan comes forward. If it is necessary to allocate land outside the existing development boundaries in the countryside, we must do so with the agreement of the local parish or town council, as this will give a very clear signal to all residents, without many of them having to be fully involved in the, in the evolution of a new plan, that the plan, new plan is not something that has just been foisted upon them. I'm not asking that this policy is inserted into a local plan approach, but the proposal is included for consultation with the public. If they don't like it, then it should not go forward further. But if they do support this simple way to gain their support for the more controversial measures that might be necessary, then I urge all councillors to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Godfrey, for the motion. The Council now has up to 20 minutes to debate the motion. That's 20 minutes for the motion. I have the first uh, request, which is from Councillor Evans. Councillor Evans, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I did read the motion and thought about it very carefully, um, but I, I really feel that I can't support this motion. Um, and the reason is there are so many unknowns um, which will still be revealed at a later date. We don't know what the new government housing numbers will be. It could be that we will be able to fix them all in in the current settlement boundaries. It could be not. And this motion will tie the council's hands. Um, Boundaries have always changed every time there's a local plan, usually at the request of the local um, authorities. Um, if we go back to our current local plan, if um, Wickham Parish Council had been asked, well, they were asked actually, um, would they like 250 houses? They, the answer would have been no. I mean, we've got 250 
houses because the government inspector has given us 250 houses and that's been accepted and they are um, in the planning stage and one or half of them is being built. So um, it isn't always the town and parish council, the actual neighbouring communities, that is the most effective. And I'm going back um, to Wickham again. Um, nobody consulted with Wickham about the 7,000 plus houses that we've got down um, at Wellbourne. And that only really affects us and it is in within uh, a field of Noel. And so I think that, of course, the council will consult widely, as they always do. But I think this is premature and it's giving the impression that um, we will not build outside uh, boundaries. We might have to. If we're given a large number of houses by the government, there is no alternative. And I think people accept that and understand that. Um, some areas suffered quite badly under local plan, the current local plan, and there are tracts of the countryside which are no-go because of the South Downs National Park. But for all those reasons, I can't support this motion. I think it's too limiting. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Evans. I'll call upon Councillor Gemmell, please. Councillor Gemmell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Yes, yeah, so with that previous local plan, our existing local plan as it is, we had a wonderful consultation. It involved all of the members of the public that wanted to get involved and the council actively encouraged uh, participation and we had a, a real intense feedback here. We had meetings all over the place provided by the parish, which involved members who came for, forward uh, to give their opinions, to form walk, working groups during an evening and to, to make their feelings known. But it was also a chance to make the residents aware of the fact that they would need more housing in the area and the type of housing that they would need, whether it was for children growing up, needing a new house or for uh, elderly people wanting to move on from a, a family home into something um, a little more manageable. And that built um, a tremendous feeling of trust between us and the council. However, before the ink was even on the paper to finalise it, our area was built out on its uh, local plan. The local plan that was promised protection for this ward um, uh, for the next, well, for until 2031. Well, people are not so trusting now and neither it seems is the council because without a better consultation, you are truly alienating the people uh, within the villages. You've only got to attend the local planning um, meetings to hear the um, horror with which these um, numbers which are bandied about are, are, are handed out. Um, Wellborn, we, we had, I can remember attending meetings um, for Wellborn uh, with Sean Woodward uh, leading uh, down in Wickham uh, um, before the proposals were, before I was a councillor, before the, the proposals were finalised, at least we had those meetings around. We, we must, must, must consult more with our uh, local uh, parish councils if you want to have any cooperation at all. Um, and I urge you to support this motion, which I will be supporting. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Horrell, please. Councillor Horrell. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor, for allowing me to speak um, in the debate on the motion. 
Uh, my concerns are about the statement of common ground, which this administration has committed to with the Partnership for South Hampshire. The recently published white paper, Planning for the Future, recommends abolishing the need for the duty to cooperate. You may feel it is better, though, to keep talking to our neighbours, given the outcome of this consultation on the paper has not yet been published and that discussions will produce a better outcome for all authorities. But why are we agreeing to the development of a joint strategy that will propose the scale and location of development needs in the Solent area? Why are we allowing the Partnership for South Hampshire to drive the discussion around potential strategic development opportunity areas? Do our residents understand the significance of your strategy? I doubt it because you haven't been transparent about this particular piece of activity you have engaged in. Where is the dialogue for our residents and their local authority about this issue? Because there is no opportunity, no requirement by the partnership to formally consult the public. Where is the engagement with the parish and town councils we've heard about from Councillor Godfrey in this discussion? Or are we about to exclude our residents from the important and plan shaping decisions that this group might make for us? The numbers in the partnership area indicate a net gap in housing supply of 11,000 homes in their current draft of the Statement of Common Ground. Winchester is the only authority significantly over delivering against its supply of housing to 2036 on these numbers. So why are we putting ourselves in play to provide homes for the broader Solent area? Is that why we're not prepared to take sites like Royal Down and Mitchell Devastation off the table? Although I understand obviously options are there for debate and discussion. I really hope that this approach with the Partnership for South Hampshire is not a backdoor way to get some of these sites into our plan. And so councillors, I hope you'll take on board the motion put forward in good faith by Councillor Godfrey and support that approach this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harrell. I'll now call on Councillor Porter, please. Councillor Porter. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, thank you, Councillor Godfrey, for an opportunity to rehearse with the Council tonight how and why a range of options are placed before the public in any consultation. As councillors know, the public is going to be uh, invited to respond to the strategic issues and priorities consultation in February and March 2021. And this was uh, went through LPAG last week, uh, this week, and is going to Cabinet next week. So public responses to consultations inform the Council how it can plan for future development and the level of public support for that approach. And we're doing that by linking to a specific website and the public can call in and get the papers sent to them as well. It's unwise, therefore, to put an option to the public in that consultation, which is unrealistic and impossible to satisfy. The proposed motion is not suitable for public consultation as one of the development strategy options in our emerging local plan because it does it cannot actually uh, be shown to be the, the correct op, one of the a realistic option. So therefore I cannot support this motion and I urge fellow councillors to reject it too. So I'll explain why. The government sets a housing feature, figure for each local authority. We had a housing figure. And then in 2020, in August, the government introduced what has come to be known as the dreaded algorithm, increasing the number of homes to over a thousand year a year. Now it has reverted to 692 a year. This brings Winchester City Council to looking for land for 2,692 homes by 2038. Offering an option which could not provide land for the number of houses to be built according to the current formula could be challenged by both the inspector and any local plan or a potential developer. As part of the local plan making process, 
the council has a legal duty to assess the likely significant effects on the environment, as Councillor Godfrey mentioned, and to identify reasonable alternatives to accommodate the level of growth for which we must plan. These reasonable alternatives must be viable and they must be realistic. Any options which don't meet this criteria can be ruled out before the council starts to consult on its draft local plan. It's the officer's professional view that we've sought that the proposal in this motion is not a viable option. Therefore, it doesn't fall within the definition of a reasonable alternative on this basis because it would not be viable or realistic and would leave the council open to legal challenge and also raise the public's expectations when they would not necessarily, we could not necessarily fulfill those expectations. From a soundness point of view, there have been a number of high profile legal challenges where local planning authorities haven't properly assessed all reasonable alternatives as part of the local plan making process. In respect of the, its viability, this is because an option which involves focusing on all new development within existing boundaries is extremely unlikely to meet what remains a substantial housing need. This is even taking account of our existing allocations and commitments and the government's very recent decision to uh, not to increase the number of new homes we have to provide for in the immediate future. So this is regardless of whether or not it was agreed with the parish council, but of course the city council will work hard to engage with all our parish councils and the communities so that they have a full say in the plan making process. We want to build consensus wherever possible, as we've done in the past when developing current and earlier local plans. We realise how important it is to make sure that each local area and local community is consulted and they know exactly what the local plan will mean for them. So the proposed motion is not therefore supported for public consultation as one of the development strategy options in our emerging local plan. I can't support this motion and therefore I urge fellow councillors to reject this motion for this reason too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Porter. I'll call on Councillor Pearson next. Councillor Pearson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'm very aware we're running out of time for your 20 minutes debate. I don't know how much time we've got left, but we've got a stack of speakers behind me. Uh, I'm looking at, I, I listened very carefully to what Councillor Evans and uh, Councillor Porter had to say about this motion, and I find it, th their response is rather curious. I noticed, uh, looking at the motion, it says, not asking the Secretary of State not to proceed with any changes to the calculation for new housing targets. In other words, to keep us at, at around about 650, um, 6, 692 at uh, Council Porters just referred to is Tad High. Now the bit that worries us in the Southern Parishes very much is the loss of the local gaps. Uh, Shedfield doesn't have a development boundary and yet Waltham Chase, which is part of Shedfield Parish, um, had to receive 250 houses. Swanmore, and because of the National Park to the north, we cannot expand to the north, so the only direction for us to go is either to the towards Waltham Chase and the gap disappears, or towards Cheryl Heath, where a very beautiful gap, uh, high environmental cost, if that gap is reduced, uh, it will disappear. Wickham is so very close to Wellborn, Ferrer's Wellborn, in, in effect will be joined to Wellborn by the line of houses down the hill from Wellborn to Wickham. Effectively, Wickham virtually becomes part of uh, the outer Ferrum development. Is that what Wickham wants? I doubt it very much because they didn't, they object as generously, as Councillor has rightly said, that 250 houses at the last allocation. Uh, the same pattern, um, Alsford, more space around it, but they fought about their allocation. Bishop Waltham had an allocation, I think it was 500. Because of the National Park, they had to go um, around the eastern side, uh, sorry, western side of Bishop's Waltham into beautiful countryside and productive farmland, horticultural land, much of it is. Now, we're simply asking 
this, that if we are going to follow the policy of environmental consideration, which this council advocates, and I entirely agree with, we have to take care of the green spaces around our villages. Uh, the alternative, and I'm not putting this as a serious suggestion, is two new towns to the north of Winchester. Now, I know what you're going to say about that because I agree with you. We're simply asking for sensible allocation distribution of these houses and a sensible amount. And to get that, we have to go back to the Secretary of State. You have to write to the Secretary of State, point these situations out to the National Park and so on. You already have, but repeat it and ask them not to proceed with the changes. What is wrong with that? I just cannot understand your attitude other than you want to keep on talking, keep on talking until the government makes a decision for you. And that is not what you want or we want either. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, we are running out of time very, very rapidly, members. I'm going to call on Councillor Brooke, the seconder of the motion to uh, write a reply. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I much appreciate that you, uh, you let me step in now. Um, I'm pleased to second this motion. Um, the engagement with parishes and town councils, as well as our um, residents, should always be one of our top priorities. And I'd like to reiterate that the purpose of this motion is to be uh, to begin open dialogue regarding thoughts and ideas for our local plan at the earliest opportunity. This administration has run three consultations, two of which were over the Christmas period, and the local plan needs and deserves better engagement in this. The Winchester vision was created after much discussion with the unelected Winchester Town Forum, and there's talk of this vision being adopted to shape the local plan. This vision is based solely around central Winchester. The elected councils around the district have not been afforded the same opportunities to create their, their vision or participation in a collective vision for our district. I support Councillor Horrell's um, uh, comments earlier regarding push and see no benefit for Winchester by remaining part of it. I see the likelihood of additional housing being pushed by stealth upon the south of our district from our neighbouring authorities, the areas who already have two MDAs providing many thousands of houses to our residents. I see this housing being pushed on those areas where they didn't need to be and without consultation. Councillor Evans said that she wasn't consulted on Wellbourne. The consultations for Wellbourne were extensive and were also open to Wickham residents and councillors. I'm disappointed that Councillor Evans didn't speak out for her residents as part of that consultation. To say that parishes and town councils weren't the solution, to suggest that they are straight out didn't want development last time shows how out of touch they are with the views. Indeed, within Councillor Evans' own ward, Hunt, they are crying out for additional development. I've observed the reduction of engagement across boundaries since this administration has taken over, not allowing Haven Borough Council their equal say on development that really affects them at west of Waterlooville. This approach is also not OK. Councillor Porter has given an excellent articulation of why she agrees or disagrees with this motion, but I respectfully disagree with her reasons. This motion is not saying we will or will not extend the settlement boundaries, and indeed there are parish councils who wish to extend their settlement boundaries. She also said that we will consult so people know the impacts the plan will have on them. We don't consult to tell people anything. We consult to seek their collaboration and input. The only reason to reject this motion is because you're not willing to seek others' input until you've already decided their fate. I urge you to vote in favour of openness, to vote in favour of transparency, to vote in favour of collaboration with our elected parish and town councils, and to vote in favour of this motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Very much indeed, Councillor Brooks. I'll now pass to Councillor Godfrey to sum up, please. Councillor Godfrey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank uh, uh, councillors for their contribution to this important debate. Engaging the public in the debate over what happens to our district when there are so many conflicting demands on resources is essential. I'm particularly grateful for comments from uh, councillors Gemmell, Horrell, Pearson, and Brooke. Um, Council Evans' uh, comments, uh, while we cannot control the actions of other authorities, if our housing target does go up, um, does that mean we need to ignore the views of parish councils? 
I think that we need to do it more, that we need to ask the public uh, more and engage with their representatives uh, to gain the trust of the public. Councillor Porter fails to understand the purpose of his motion as it does not seek to offer a new or alternative approach to how the council will deliver uh, its uh, um, uh, housing requirements uh, and change them a strategy, but to allow for an option to improve consultation on it. It is disappointing that the administration seems so reluctant to openly consult with the public on this or practically any other matter. The local plan demands a much more open and transparent engagement with the public than those that uh, ever happened before, as Councillor Brook uh, referred to. With so many restrictions on normal activity right now, we must give our residents the expectation that their interests will be properly considered before decisions over controversial issues are made. The apparent threat of a huge demand for housing posed by tying ourselves to so closely to the Partnership for South Hampshire strategy without a word to the public is deeply worrying. By working closely with the parish and town councils when it is necessary to allocate land outside existing settlement boundaries, we will be able to demonstrate that we have made our best efforts to consult, albeit, albeit through a valid and knowledgeable proxy uh, in form of a parish and town councils. I ask you to support this motion so, um, so that the option to work closely with local people on this important policy can be considered for adoption as a standard practice for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Godfrey. I've received a point of order from Councillor Todd. Councillor Todd, can you state the procedural rule or the statutory provision, please? Yes, um, I, I, uh, I'm moving to suspend the council procedure rule under section 11.9. The rule I'm proposing to suspend to allow further debate so that we can have an equal number of speakers on both sides of the motion is the notice of motion limiting the period to 20 minutes. So I propose that we increase it to, uh, to another, another 20 minutes or certainly another 10. OK, we will look at this and get back to you immediately. I'd like to second the motion by Councillor Todd. The chairman, the chairman should say no. You're given the, the amount of time. That's it. That's why we have standing orders, Councillor Raphael. I did also reserve my right to speak and so should have gone last and therefore this should have been suspended prior to that, Councillor Todd. Very good point. I've been four speeches on one side and two on the other. Should have put your hand up. As long as the speeches were well made. Mr Mayor, Mr. Yes. Mayor it's, it's Lisa Kirkman, uh, Director of Resources. If I can confirm, under Council Procedure Rule 17 Rules of Debate, motions which may be moved during debate does not include a motion to extend the time allowed. Um, I. What you can do is amend motion, postpone consideration, adjourn, adjourn, proceed to next business, question now be put, a member no longer heard, member leaves a meeting and a motion to exclude the press. That's it. So Mr Mayor, we, we cannot accept that. Okay, motion. the ruling has been made that I will not accept that point of order on the basis that it is not allowable under the constitution. Right, please can I now put the motion to a vote. Mr. I've received I've received a number of requests for a recorded vote. So, Mrs. Kirkman, can you please advise? Of course, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I have councillors Cook, Gemmell, Horrell, Lumby, and Raphael all noted as wanting a recorded vote. Um, I would therefore ask David Blakemore to undertake that roll call. 
please. David, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members, I'll now call out your name in alphabetical order. If you could please indicate if you are for, against, or abstain on voting on the motion as set out on your agenda. Councillor Ackwell. Against. Councillor Becker. Against. Councillor Bell. Against. Councillor Bentote. Against. Councillor Brook. For. Councillor Bronk, apologies. Against. Councillor Clear. Against. Councillor Clementson. For. Councillor Cook. For. Councillor Crask. Against. Councillor Cunningham. For. Councillor Cutler. Against. Councillor Evans. Against. Councillor Fern. Against. <clears throat> Councillor Ferguson. Against. Councillor Gemmell. Four. Councillor Godfrey. Four. Councillor Gordon Smith. Against. Councillor Green. Against. Councillor Griffiths has sent her apologies. Councillor Hiscock. Against. Councillor Horrell. Four. Councillor Hubby, I believe, has left the meeting. Okay. Councillor Hutchison. Against. Councillor Laming. Against. Councillor Lurney. Against. Councillor Lumby. Four. Councillor Mather. Four. Councillor McLean. Four. Councillor Miller. Four. Councillor Murphy. Against. Councillor Pearson. Four. Councillor Porter. Against. Councillor Power. Against. Councillor Prince. Against. Councillor Reid. Four. Councillor Raffel. Four. Councillor Rutter. Against. Councillor Scott. Four. Councillor Thompson. Against. Councillor Todd. Against. Councillor Weir. Against. Councillor Weston. Councillor Weston. Councillor Weston. Hello, sorry, sorry, I just couldn't get into my microphone. Four. Thank um, you. Also, can you note that Councillor Humby has said he's had Wi Fi problems? Thank you, Councillor Weston. Councillor Williams. Again. Thank you, members. If you just uh, just give us a moment to uh, toss up the um, results of that. Thank you very much. Six against sixteen mm -hmm. four. Oh. oh, the camera's gone off. I think. Yeah, I think the camera. Give me to the room, David, please. Yeah, that's fine. So, the screen is gone at this end, but I can still be heard, so I'm going to continue. The result of the recorded vote is 26 members against and 16 members for. So the motion is, is not carried. The motion is not carried. I'll now move on to agenda item number nine. Changes to committee memberships. 
Mrs Kirkman. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I've been notified of the following change to committee memberships. For the licensing committee, Councillor Gemmell is to replace Councillor Griffiths as a deputy member. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs Kirkman. Agenda item 10, questions from members of council. All members have copies of the questions and the answers which were circulated electronically prior to the meeting and are also available on the Council's website. A reminder that our procedure is that only the questioner is able to ask one supplementary question and should indicate accordingly. Members are reminded that our procedural rules allow a total occupied by time occupied by questions and the answer and the supplementaries shall not exceed 30 minutes. In order to maximize the opportunity for questions to be answered, can I ask that supplementary questions be succinct and to the point, please? I'm starting with council, council question number one. Councillor Brook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to the portfolio holder for the very thorough response in answer to my very short question. So I thank you for that. I wonder what deficit we are expected to be at the commencement of this service at the start of February, if possible. Um, our intention, so the, the, the financial plan has never been based on the idea that we will have uh, sold in the full number of uh, bins in order to achieve break even by the 1st of February. Um, the rate of sale is accelerating uh, very rapidly at the moment, um, as the answer makes clear. Um, and we've already achieved about um, a third of the budget objective, and that's before, um, uh, before the service has even started. Um, our intention and our goal and what the uh, entire team is working to is to achieve the goal uh, to deliver the revenue that is in the budget. Um, and that's despite the fact that we have actually made allowance for the fact that we may not. Uh, there is a reserve available in case we don't, but that is not the planning basis that we're working on. Um, we will not have achieved the, the, the full budget by the 1st of February, but that was never the plan. Um, we expect to do so relatively soon into the into the year as um, spring comes along. People see um, the uh, bins out there and people who do not have a subscription find um, that they need to have one in order to have their garden waste collected. Thank you very much. Second question is from, from Councillor Power. Councillor Power. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I do have a supplementary and I thank the portfolio holder for his answer. I'd be grateful for his confirmation that he will be supporting the installation of a tetra pack recycling point in Allsford. Discussions have moved forward, but we very much would like the support of Winchester Council in getting it installed. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Power. Yes, we are enthusiastically keen to get uh, as many carbon recycling bins as we can across the district. Um, it is not wholly in our control. Um, the supplier, uh, the, 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 the company that provides the service um, has certain expectations. As the answer shows, they've been pleased with the quality and amount of material that they're collecting at our first site. In essence, uh, they have their own criteria for other sites in the district. Uh, the first is, will their vehicle be able to get access to the site? Um, the second is, is there enough ma other material being collected at the site so that they won't get contamination, for example, for people putting uh, bottles in there or clothing in there? Um, and then there is the matter of uh, we will have to pay for um, sites to be included, although um, the amount is very reasonable. Um, so I, I am enthusiastically keen to get as many of these bins as we can across the entire district. And I would hope, because I know that the original impetus for this project came from Allsford, that Allsford um, would be amongst the first of them. But the, the, the decision is a joint one between us and the provider of the bins. However, we will make our 
our desire for more sites very clear to them and a desire for a site in Alsford very clear to them as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Todd. Uh, question number three, Councillor Mather. Councillor Mather, if you'd like to put your question, please. Oops. Um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> electronic uh, speed warning signs are much more effective in reducing speeds uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in, in villages in the district and in Sleepers Hill. Uh, than the virtually non-existent uh, community speed watch initiative. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in, in the uh, uh, city, in, in the towns and villages of the district, uh, parish and town councils provide administrative and uh, financial support for running costs for electronic warning, uh, speed warning signs. Um, in the city, uh, we don't. <clears throat> our, our, our equivalent is the town account, which is ultimately under the control uh, of this uh, uh, city council administration, uh, both politically and constitutionally. And will the uh, city council administration do what it can um, to help? Um, bring down speeds on major arterial roads in Winchester. It's something that the residents feel very strongly about. And um, <clears throat> uh, there is an opportunity there with electronic speed warning signs. But, you know, we don't have parish and town councils. We need the administration, um, uh, the support of the administration. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Todd, over to you again. Um, uh, Thank you, Councillor Mather. Well, I would I would stress that um, we are a council that believes in uh, devolving decision making, uh, and we take the town forum, which consisted consists of wholly elected, all of them elected in competitive elections, uh, none of them unopposed, wholly elected group of district councillors representing the city area, uh, and we are serious about allowing them to take decisions that are the equivalent of those decisions taken by town and parish councils. And indeed, I was very concerned earlier to hear that uh, Councillor Godfrey explicitly stated that he believed that the City Council should not um, have a view uh, on, for example, the question of planning on rural areas within uh, the city. Um, and, I, you know, just a, a point in passing, there are rural areas within the city. There's the golf course, there's the land west of Land of Main, which is in the Sheila. There's land west of Royal West in Winchester Mews, agricultural land in the Sheila. There's land west of Killam Lane, agricultural yeah. land in the Sheila. So we do believe in decision making being made by the town forum on issues that are matters for the town forum. Um, the one thing I would say that is a change since the days when it was possible to get um, electronic signs more easily out of the County Council uh, in partnership and with permission of the County Council is the County Council's policy on things has changed quite dramatically. And they are now explicit that when it comes to most speed measures, even if the local authority is prepared to pay for it, even if uh, the developer is prepared to pay for it, they will still in most cases, unless there has been an injury accident, not allow changes to go ahead. Um, so I'm I'm happy to look again at the question of electronic speed signs. Um, but to be clear, there is no intention that this cabinet will overrule the wishes of the town forum for anything that historically has sat within the town forum's area of responsibility. Thank you, Councillor Todd. Uh, Councillor Mather, I'm assuming, uh, but please clarify for me, that was your supplementary, was it not? Uh, yes. Yes, it was, was it? Uh, yes. Thank you very much, Councillor. Question number four, Councillor Rutter, please. Councillor Rutter. Thank you to the uh, cabinet member for my response and no further questions. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Councillor Rutter. Question number five, Councillor Godfrey. <coughs> thank Councilor you, Mr Godfrey. Mayor. Um, and thank you to the portfolio holders for the answer. It is good to hear that uh, our government is providing all the funding for the two main schemes that you mentioned. I also welcome the online schemes, um, which were implemented in many other parts of the country six to nine months ago. But that they will have little or no benefit for those business, businesses that are struggling now. What specific short term measures are being developed to help businesses recover as soon as pandemic restrictions are eased? And will these include a demand from a city council for the removal of all temporary road closures and car carriageway narrowings around the city that have been the cause of so much unnecessary congestion and added pollution? Thank you, Councillor Godfrey. Can I please refer that one to <coughs> Councillor Ferguson? Um, so thank you, Councillor Godfrey, for your supplementary um, question. Um, I would beg to differ, differ that some of the responses that I've given in my answer are not actually short term measures that will have an impact now. Um, the specific support that's being given to businesses on the high street who've been affected by the COVID pandemic is happening now and it will allow them to build economic resilience as they go forward and come out of the pandemic. Um, in addition to that, the, the work on the e-commerce platform is um, moving apace and it will be in place, we hope, by the February half term. In addition, we are looking very, um, very clearly and focused at what we can do with the additional restriction support funding that we've been given to set up a hardship fund to help those businesses who need that extra bit of help to get through this very difficult period. And one of the things I'd like to say is that this council and the officers within the local economy team have been extremely agile in responding to the ever-changing set of restrictions in which we find ourselves, which in many cases have been brought on by the government's mishandling of this pandemic. And we will remain agile in our response in helping businesses as we move forward. With reference to the restrictions on the um, North Walls in the city, as Councillor Godfrey knows, these restrictions were brought in by Hampshire County Council and it is not within the City Council's gift to remove those restrictions. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Moving on now to question number six, Councillor Lumby. Councillor Lumby, please. Muted. You're muted, Councillor. Sorry, I um, I clearly need a, a, a youth to turn it off and deal with the technology for me. Apologies. We'll try again. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me at the back? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to the portfolio holder for her answer. It was interesting to see the comparison with Salisbury, which she obviously views as within a surrounding district. Indeed, her answer seems pretty much entirely focused on the city itself. There is a big district outside the city. It may not stretch as far as Salisbury, but it contains many places to shop, in our wonderful market towns in Whiteley and in the villages. I assume given her answer that not much was done in the round of Christmas for them. What specific steps are proposed to support the areas outside the city going forward? Specific steps please. Thank you. Thank you very much Councillor Lumbee. Councillor Ferguson please. Councillor Ferguson for your reply. Um, yes, yes, thank you. Th thank you Councillor Lumbee for your supplementary question. Um, again, I would refer you um, to my answer. Um, if you actually look at the answer, it does very clearly explain that specific steps have been taken to support our high streets across the district, not only in the city. The rediscover, um, rediscover what's on your doorstep work 
was for all of our high streets across the city, including our vibrant market towns. The work and the Christmas film that was done to promote the whole district, our, all of our high streets, definitely included Orsford, Wickham, Bishop's Waltham, Denmead. I remember seeing pictures of the Denmead beautiful Christmas tree. And indeed, the work that we've done through the Market Town Partnerships and providing specific support for those market towns in terms of increasing footfall, reminding of people what's on their doorstep. That again has been directed not at just at the city, but of each of our market towns as well. Indeed, the Support Local Love Local campaign was directed again at both the city and the market towns. And we have specific um, uh, sites on our website which will take people to their market towns so they can support their local businesses. We have our next round of um, market town partnership meetings happening next week. And the e-commerce platform that we're proposing is for the whole district. It will benefit our independent retailers and the fabulous retailers that we have and hospitality businesses, well, just mainly retailers, not hospitality in this section, um, in each of our market towns as well. And the concept is that if I live in the Winchester district and I want to support our businesses across the district with the e-commerce platform, I can order something from Allsford, I could order something from Bishop's Waltham, I could order something from Winchester, and I would be supporting the local economy and our retailers from across the district. Officers are currently working on a future of our high streets plan. This will focus on how we recover over the next 12 month period, but it will also look to the future. And the key thing here is it is our high streets. So it is our market towns as well as the city. I am dedicated to supporting the whole local economy across the whole district. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Question number seven, Councillor Reid. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could I thank the uh, leader for her reply? And in fact, goes a lot further than what I'd anticipated um, and look forward to the report to be presented to the Licensing and Regulations Committee in February of this, this year. Does the leader therefore consider it appropriate to hand deliver door to door Liberal Democrat political literature during the national lockdown when we should all be staying at home in order to protect the NHS and to save lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for, uh, for your question, Councillor Reid. I don't see um, how that's got anything to do with um, the uh, question on the uh, that you posed regarding the elections um, and I would like to reassure you oh, electioneering we are I would like to reassure you that we are not um, delivering leaflets um, at the moment during the um, the national lockdown thank you councillor Thompson Question number eight is Councillor Horrell. Councillor Horrell, please. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you for allowing me to um, uh, follow up on the. You're very quiet, Carol. You're, you're very quiet, Councillor Horrell. Could you turn up your volume, please? Apologies, Mr. Mayor, is that better? Yes, that's good, that's good, that's good, it's better. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, thank you to the portfolio holder for his answer to my question. Um, but my supplementary, Mr. Mayor, is, is it not true that your administration, uh, Councillor Cutler, struggles to just get things done is it not it's not about buying more properties um, it's about generating income 
from those that we already own. And for the last two years, we've had the dither and delay with projects not moving forward after extensive reviews. And so I, I don't understand the uh, response to the question um, as asked. And now you're asking the poor residents of Winchester to pay for green waste, the council tax increase, extra parking charges, etc. In these very difficult times, is that not completely unfair on our residents and punitive? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Councillor Horrell, for, for, for your supplementary question. Um, I've been struggling to try and understand conservative economic policy at the moment. Um, we have the worst crisis, financial crisis, this council's probably ever faced with a deficit of three million pounds. And your policy seems to be don't increase fees and charges or council tax, don't sell any assets, don't cut services, go out and buy assets and or, or, or spend a lot of money on new projects. Um, somewhere along the line, these don't these don't add up. Um, we, this administration in the last uh, 18 months has discovered that entrepreneurial, as, as the previous administration kept talking about, the strategic asset purchase scheme is generating no money for the council. Everything that was purchased during that time um, uh, is still costing the council money, that asset management had been ignored as, as an important aspect of good management. So I'm quite content that we as a council are taking a sensible approach to running the finances here and your talk about um, that has implied going out and buying assets at, at various times. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to quite chime with what uh, the minister, Robert Jenrick, said the other day, who urged councils to reduce dependence on commercial income. Again, how does this add up? The Public Works Loan Board um, new rules mean that any expenditure for pure income generation means that nothing can be borrowed for other purposes. Again, how does this add up? So I'm content that we are taking a very measured response to extreme circumstances. Thank you, Councillor Cutler. I'm moving on now to question number nine, Councillor McLean. Councillor McLean, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, um, uh, Councillor Nelly, for your response. My question, I think, is a fairly simple one. We've met twice now on the site here in Bishop Walton, which is in, um, an incredibly developable piece of real estate. And I see the dates that you're suggesting this can be finished by. But my question is, why wasn't this started some months ago, particularly after we met on the site when it was being developed? We then saw some trees coming down. We've seen a bit of this and a bit of that. But why wasn't a developer put in place by your good selves? Um, why hasn't more happened on the site? And why is there not a tenant in there generating money for our council? Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Learning. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor McLean. Councillor Learning, please. Uh, thank you for your question. Councillor McLean. Uh, development always takes longer than we'd like and in this particular case we did have issues about appointing the contractor as the um, as you're aware the um, tenders came in higher than we'd expected and that did require um, some additional decision making which inevitably has further delayed matters. Um, I have to say I did very much enjoy visiting Bishop's Waltham with you to see the demolition of the of the previous depot and we have been progressing things um, as quickly as we can. Um, it is unfortunate that we have had these these delays um, without Covid and various other issues. I'm sure we'd be well on our way on the site now. Not good enough. Much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Councillor Clooney. Counts uh, question number 10, Councillor Lumby. Councillor Lumby, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think I have the remaining questions, so I am all that's between us and the end. Um, 
thank you um, to the portfolio holder for her answer. We have, of course, heard more on the topic of the pavilion already um, from the answers given to questions from the public, uh, and indeed some confusion as to who the leader is. Um, the portfolio holder's response is brief, but I'm afraid rather ambiguous, especially the reference to the delivery of what is referred to as an appropriate new pavilion. Can she confirm what she means by appropriate and in particular whether that will meet the criteria in my question, i.e. that it will provide ECB compliant facilities for both pitches for the district cricket teams, which can provide all year round facilities for other sports, schools and community groups. Thank you. Councillor Lani, please. Um. Absolutely, Councillor Lumby. Uh, it is imperative that the um, facilities are ECB compliant. This is definitely a cricket pavilion and that is its, its primary role um, on the site. Um, where we talk about appropriate, this will mean that we will be looking at how we meet community aspirations within the building. Uh, you're aware that we're looking at amendments to the plans um, at the moment, but what we don't want to do is change the functionality of the building and the benefits it will bring to local people. Thank you for your answer, Councillor Lerney. I move on to question number 11 and again, Councillor Lumby. Councillor Lumby. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you for everybody to uh, keep me going. I thought I would uh, of, we will we, we'll be done by now, but um, no matter. I, I think it's important, however, and I think we all agree that the importance of sport to the physical and mental well-being of residents of the entire district. This includes White and, of course, the entirety of the southern parishes. And this is, of course, all the more important during these difficult times. Given that importance, does the portfolio holder regret his decision to cancel a proposed new forecourt facility in the southern parishes, or is his focus still on the residents of the city? Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Lumby. Councillor Prince, please. Well, firstly, I can say categorically, my view is that it's not just on the city. We are so keen to be able to make the southern parishes have a facility that will take them forward and give the opportunity for the youth, as you mentioned in your previous question, to go out and participate in sport and leisure. We, we, we want that, we need it, and we recognise some of the um, difficulties of providing that across the southern parishes, which is a big area. We're doing some of the work, as you know, in conjunction with the schools um, and there will hopefully be a new school at North Whiteley, which will help that community. There is already one that opens its doors at Swanmoor. So we are beginning to build and we have done a full review of how many leisure centres or private leisure um, complexes there are within um, a, a short distance of the various population centres in the southern parishes and indeed there are more and uh, we, we just take this as a great opportunity to develop widely as we go forward um, and take one step forward. It's a busy um, shopping centre at its when things are going well and people go there and want to go there, hence we are seeking to enhance the facilities as we indicated in our first response to you. Uh, I think that's basically all I've got to say. We are committed and uh, the residents of the southern parishes want to use sporting facilities. I've been down to them and I've been amazed by how many people have been taking part at some silly hours of the day. So that is my response to your supplementary. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Councillor Prince. That answer to question 11 concludes the formal business for this evening, and I thank you all for your attendance.